Ehren Kompanie, Süßen, Achtung, das geht das, Gift. When dealing with the history of the East German Army, the Nationale Volksarmee, one thing is clear. It looks surprisingly similar to the Third Reich era Wehrmacht. This was in contrast to the new West German Army, the Bundeswehr, that toned down its Germanness using many American items of kit or abandoning traditional German styles altogether. The question is, why did a communist army copy and perpetuate the uniforms and traditions of an ideologically opposed and defeated predecessor? Well, the answer is quite simple. These German army uniforms were designed to deliberately echo the uniform of the defeated Wehrmacht. The reason was that East Germany wished to be seen as an independent country within the Soviet-controlled Warsaw Pact, with a unique identity. It did not want its soldiers looking like Red Army clones, as had largely been the case with the earlier Barracked People's Police, an accusation they happily levelled at the new West German Bundeswehr, accusing it of being American in look and equipment, and therefore un-German. So what did the East German Army reuse from Hitler's Wehrmacht? Well, for a start, the uniform colour, field grey, and the general design of the tunics are almost identical to wartime models. The belt and buckle design are the same, though with communist symbols. The East German army also kept brown belts for officers, something the Bundeswehr abandoned. The style of the visor cap was almost the same, and rank badges remained pretty much unchanged from World War II. Officers retained the pre-war design of riding breeches and jackboots, both not used in the West German army. Another particularly German feature was the retention and wearing of dress daggers, and the use of sabres by officers on parades. Both of these items were also deleted from the West German army. Even camouflage uniforms introduced in 1968 were basically copies of World War II Waffen-SS camouflage suits. The East German M56 helmet was also a leftover from Hitler's Wehrmacht, designed in 1942 to replace the more familiar M35 and M40 Stahlhelms. Across the border in West Germany, the new Bundesgrenzschutz, or Federal Border Service, were using World War II era German helmets. In 1956, the East German authorities suspected that the West Germans' new army, the Bundeswehr, would also be re-equipped with World War II German helmets. So the East German army needed a helmet that would distinguish their men from West German troops and also from Red Army soldiers. Trialled by the Wehrmacht in 1943, it had not been adopted. East German leaders didn't want to provoke offence in the Soviet Union by using the traditional Nazi-inspired M35 helmet. Although the M56 has a rather peculiar shape, it proved to be very effective ballistically. The shape offered very good protection against small arms fire, as is demonstrated here. East German government fears about the West German army using World War II steel helmets proved unfounded because they ended up using American M1 helmets. But the East German M56 became the symbol of the Nationale Volksarmee, a leftover of World War II recycled by the new regime into something uniquely German. Apparently, the Wehrmacht-inspired look of the East German army was popular with many citizens who had mixed feelings about the Soviet Union and didn't want their armed forces to look like the Red Army. It certainly helped to reinforce the idea that East Germany was an independent state, and perhaps most importantly, an independent German state with its own history and culture. Although never tested in combat, many have said that the East German army was one of the best trained and motivated forces on either side during the Cold War. It certainly possessed a unique identity and a strong esprit de corps. I hope you found this short film interesting. If you have, please do subscribe and also share, and support me on Patreon. Many thanks.